Hello, my name is Carol May Whittett, your creativity and spiritual life coach and your host of Her Conversations Tools for the Awakening. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. What is the awakening? This is the moment in time when humanity rises up out of the darkness. Who is awakening? Each one of us present on earth today, reclaiming our sovereignty, seeking greater possibilities in our reality and looking for solutions. We know being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If we can transform ourselves, we can change the world. Guests on her conversations will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. Listen to their stories and hear how they are in service to the world. Let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. Before I go into this week's episode with Angela Smith, if you're listening to this before the 9th of October 2024, there is still time for you to join me for this month's Creative Confidence Masterclass. And this month I'm diving deep into the energy of creativity. So if there is a project of yours that has stalled, or if you want to end the year on a high note, join me. The link to join me is in the show notes below. And also a reminder that Her Conversations has a sister podcast, Her Inspirations, Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations, and every week I speak about a different aspect of our creativity and spirituality. Link to that is in the show notes. My guest this week is Angela Smith, an intuitive healing massage therapist, author of wellness books for adults and children, and a self-love expert. During our conversation, Angela shares how she was guided to write her award-winning Stepping Into Love during an intuitive healing session with a master healer and how following divine guidance has shaped her life and how her books will give readers the confidence to do the same. So as always, I begin by asking my guest, HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel that Higher Energetic I feel that resonance when I'm in tune with my heart. It's like when I take a pause, when I take a breath and come back to me, and it's like, ah, there I am. There's my heart. Mm -hmm. It's like when I turn off the external, the external noise, the everything that can be coming at us or at me, and it's like when I just take a moment I think this is where I am now what needs to come next so it's like a pregnant pause where I have a a conversation or in commune with the universe and my higher self beautiful I love that thank you so much and before we go into the episode can you just share with us a little bit about your story what got you to do the work that you're doing today I think it was becoming a single mother and finding myself very alone and so I knew I needed to do some work on myself so that I didn't feel alone because even we can be surrounded by people in our lives but we can feel as if we're doing it all on our own and so I had to just look at what was going on in my life. I spent many months in India I did many, many courses, and once I became a mum, it was like I knew I had to make things work between my son and I, like I wanted a family dynamic that our home was a sanctuary. And so I had to look at the relationships that I was creating, and if I didn't like something that was going on over the years, I needed to have a look at what was how was I contributing to that and as I often say to people of we're the common denominator in our lives and not to blame ourselves for where we're at but to look at that as a, like a stepping stone to okay this is where I'm at but actually I want to be here so what do I need to do to get there and that's what I started to do to just read even more and just just to really be an observer of myself and my life and what was going on. And can you remember maybe one of the biggest realizations that you had that started you to kind of shift towards knowing what you needed to do in your work, like your purpose work? 
I've always been somebody that wants to inspire other people. And so my business name is True Potential. And so I think I was having a chat with a friend today when we, we were talking about purpose. And I said, the purpose doesn't have to be, um, like some people say they don't know what their purpose is. But for me, it's not something like you have a list of things. It's the essence of who we are. And so my purpose, I believe, is to inspire by being, I suppose, inspirational, by being, by uplifting others, by being positive, by showing people that there's always a way. Mm-hmm. There's always a way for your, for your dreams to come true. We, we can find our way no matter we feel like we're, sometimes we can feel like we're drowning. And often that was the case for me. So what was pivotal? Ooh, um, I think several, you know, intimate relationships going belly up one after the other. And again, it was like, okay, I'm the denominator here. So let's, let's, let's change this. So it was sort of like a, a, a big things that were happening in my life, but also very much almost like a meditative process where I would daily witness who I am in this situation. And I think sometimes your whole life feels like it's falling apart, but I guess really it's falling apart so that you come back together Mm. stronger. And so it's mine has just been a continuous journey knowing, you know, since I was 20, my great uncle, um, got me involved with the White Eagle Lodge and that was very much the start of my spiritual journey. Um, so I always knew that there was something guiding me, uh, like an overarching light or presence. And so I very much sort of just followed that. I just, you know, it's been so long since I've been on my spiritual path, but you know, there's been the ebbs and the flows and you've sort of, I've walked away from things and then I come back and think, actually, I knew that all the way along, but I needed to go through so many different cycles to have a deeper understanding of of who I was. So it's hard to pinpoint because it's just been, I've just known that I'm on the spiritual journey. And so I just show up and I just I allow myself to be guided. I look at signs along the way and I just throw myself to it, basically. Mm-hmm. I know, I know it was an unfair question. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, mate, but, you know, like in, just kind of reflecting about your experience and, you know, thinking about my experience, if someone asked me that question, I'd be like, I don't know, really, where <laughs> where I could really say things began there are moments, there are moments where I can think these are kind of really like highlighted moments, but I can't say anything was ever that one thing. And, um, but the idea of looking at your life and taking responsibility for it and allowing responsibility to actually be power to you as opposed to blame. And I think that's sometimes the confusion when things are kind of turned back and people say well who's you know who's there in the middle of all of these things every time all these things are happening to you it's you and the the response would be like are you saying that I'm bringing this on myself no but what if you are like isn't it more empowered to believe that you are bringing these experiences to yourself because then if you are, then you've got the power to flip it over. The minute you give it to somebody else, then you're at the whim and you're the the victim in the situation. Um, so it's, it's always a tricky one to say, but, you know, I'm hoping that over time that people can recognise that it's you. And because it's you, it can be you to, you know, change gears. And, yeah, to change gears and flip it, yeah. Absolutely, and that's the exciting bit. And I've been a victim many times in my life, but now it's like, no, no, you're in the centre of this. So, how we, how are we going to change this? How are we going to? Um, I mean, I love life, and I just find, you know, I'm so passionate about different projects that I'm involved with, and my writing and things. And so, it's like I just get up and I know what I need to do, and then I, it, it, and I just go for it, and it's. 
and I care less about what people think. And and my boundaries are stronger. Mm. And it's interesting, I'm prepared, I'm giving a 15 minute keynote speech on the weekend. Right. And I was thinking, you know, they say to involve the audience if ever you were speaking. And I so I was thinking to start off with, you know, if I was to ask you in the audience, if you love yourself, I wonder how many of you would put up your hand. Mm. And then I think it's breaking down what the loving ourselves means. And for me, the loving ourselves means saying yes to yourself. It means not say, saying yes to others when it's going to be detrimental to your soul, when it's actually going to hurt you, because then it just brings discord between you and that other person. So the loving ourselves for me is about honouring who we are. It's not an airy, fairy thing. It's it's really being so strong and solid in, in, in who you are. It's not about loving a particular part of your body. It's about embracing all of who you are. Mm. And when you do that, then you have the power to step into why you're here and just to get on with it and just mm. to embrace that. And then that is what becomes infectious for other people because we are all here to help one another grow. Mm. And I think, you know, when we find ourselves in strife and situations where things go belly up and they're not what we want, there's, there's the opportunity for transformation. Mm. And we're here to transform. You know, we're not here to have one drama after another, after another, because it becomes very, very tiring. And then we're not really living. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and we want to be living. We want to be joyful. You know, we were talking before, there's a lot of noise out there in the world. But as I said, I'm also a massage therapist, and I said to my clients at the beginning of the year, you need to stay in your own lane. If you're going to be forever focusing externally on what's going on, you're not going to move your life forward. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to become resentful because you haven't moved your life forward. And no one else is going to care about your life as much as you are going to care about your life. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking at a real soul level because, as I say, we have a soul purpose, whether that is to show up as a supportive person for your family or just to show up and exude love. As I say, it doesn't have to be a what's my purpose and then we get stuck on what our purpose is because mm. that, isn't, that isn't what it's about. It's not I've got a purpose or you haven't got a purpose or my purpose is bigger than yours because I always say we're equally important when we all play a part in the jigsaw puzzle of life. So the more we get out of... Um, you know, the competitive nature of who we are as a soul, then we can just be and just enjoy. You know, we, all, we always say get back to who you are, know who you are, know yourself, know what you're about. And I think that's probably the piece that trips everyone up when it comes, well, well, who am I? You know, if I'm not the mother, the wife, the, the daughter, the CEO, if I'm not those things, who am I? And that's what often I feel keeps people holding on to the roles that they've adopted for themselves because of that element of, or that moment of self-reflection and also that moment or moments of when you let go of who you're identifying as or people identify you as, there needs to be a period and sometimes it can be longer than you like of solitude of being like, well, who am I? What can it be? And it's how are you guiding either through your own experience or guiding your clients of how to work through that moment where you know that what you've used to identify you isn't who you are even though these are roles that you may need to play, you know, it's not walk away and not be the mother, not be the wife anymore, but stop be letting that be who you are. And then being in that time where nothing makes sense, you don't know who you are, you don't identify with anything, that limbo 
when you start to look at everything and go, I'm going to have to cut some ties, maybe I'm going to have to erect some boundaries and building up the strength to be able to do that because it's invariably going to trigger some sort of response and reaction. Oftentimes it's not going to be uh, favorable. And, and that moment where it's you're, you're finding your feet, you're building your strength, knowing that you know, you're know you going to have to go through some tricky times and the you know the the confrontation of solitude in the world before you you kind of encounter your own soul i think as you say it's almost like the death of the soul or death of part of the ego as we mm. as we know it like if i bring that back to myself for so almost 30 years i was a vegetarian and then i could see that i was identifying as that as the well, a whole lot of things that go go with that, the rhetoric. And then I thought, I actually need to eat some meat to, to let go of that identification of one thing. And so I started to eat a little bit of meat. And oh boy, oh boy, did I, I just had no idea of how strong my identification was as a vegetarian. It was permeated every aspect of my being. Mm-hmm. And it took me two years to let go of that label and to find a new me. It was fascinating. I, it was really, 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 really fascinating. And so what I also realize is, like I heard what you're saying, I think what, and this is why I write, you know, especially in my Stepping Into Love book series, is it goes beyond that. It goes beyond the labels and it comes back to self-worth and the self-love. So, that, so when we feel worthy, then the labels don't matter. We can show up and turn up as we are, being who we are. And of course, we there's a moral compass, there's a societal moral compass, and we have our own moral compass. So it doesn't mean to say to let go or that you can do anything. But when you feel a strong sense of who you are without the labels, then you show up as a stronger and more authentic version of yourself. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, please talk about your book and your book series, Stepping Into Love. So my Stepping Into Love book, um, how that came about is I was having an intuitive healing session with a woman here in New Zealand and she maps out your body and she said to me, there's a book coming through. She said it will be, won't be a children's book because that was a lot, that was the main genre that I wrote and she said that it will sort of be like a companion to one of your children's books. And um, I was walking along the beach the next day and then the title, I will say, came in sideways and then the introduction and then I began writing the book. And most of my books, I've got nine books out, but a couple more on the way. They generally come as a suggestion from someone and it's almost like a spark and then, and then I'm away. And I don't write every day, but I write when I feel inspired to write and so this book it sort of took six years to write i'd finished it or so i thought and it was almost like spirit put me through my paces it was like each chapter what i was speaking about i needed to go through it to a deeper level so i could add in more compassion to the book um like for example i don't talk about goals because i think goals can be we can have an expectation of ourselves um I speak about being led by our hearts, being vision led, so that when you have a vision, then the steps automatically show up. Mm. But also with the going back time and time again to each chapter, what I hadn't realized is that I will say to anybody, you can open this book up at any page and there will be a message for you. And it has not, um, hasn't failed yet and so it's almost like an oracle because there was that deeper deeper energy um behind it and so you can really you can pick it up and you can read any chapter at at a time because i think people are um well we're time we're time poor as i say we're, we're it's like we're being pulled in so many directions so it's not literally that we're time poor because we've had the same 24 hours it just might be that we don't choose to place that time on our self-development or on our 
um, or, or through um, reading or whether it be listening to, a, to an audio book. And so that's why I love this book because you can just open it and there can be, it's almost like, you know, if you're doing a pack, um, a pack of cards, you're shuffling and then one comes out with a message. It's sort of, sort of like that. And then I've got the workbook, which is your stepping into um, love workbook, which is to help overcome self-doubt and overwhelm, encourage greater self-esteem and deepen self-love once, mm -hmm. um, once again. And like this chapter, I've just opened it up as prioritizing you. It's important to protect and value your energy as this is your main source of currency. Can you name three situations where you allow yourself to get distracted? Mm. And then after you've written that down, now write down, now write down three ways in which you can eliminate, eliminate those distractions. Instead, focusing on yourself and the dreams that you have for yourself and your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that might sound quite um, simplified, but really, again, if we're not following, you know, our heart's wisdom or living our dreams, then we become very dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, another chapter is be led by your curiosity. Mm -hmm. Another one is be, be the reason. Have you considered the thought that you could light up another's world and be the reason that they smile today? Write the way, write down the ways that you bring joy and impact others and, and acknowledge yourself for this because often we don't acknowledge ourselves for what we do bring to others and what we do bring to the to the world. And I, and I love this because it's, you know, as I say, if somebody says, well, I haven't got a purpose, you know, I don't know what I what I bring. And I, when I was out walking today with a friend, she, she said that very same thing, I don't know what my purpose is. And she's a weaver. And I said, you weave, you weave with your energy. You're very intuitive. You bring your, you bring your healing each day to situations. And, you know, she spoke about the love that she feels for her grandchildren. And so it was like, just a, ah, it's almost like that, that's, that's my sole purpose. You know, as I say, it doesn't have to be that we've all got to be inventors or, you know, on, on the world stage. Well, we're all on the world stage anyway, but it's just acknowledging ourselves for that. And at the end of each chapter, like in this one, often I've written a, um, a quote, but this one is by Thich Nhat Hanh. Because of your smile, you make life more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's declarations in that, and then like the, the stepping into love, a journey to self-healing. Here you can affirm, I am loved and affirmed in my relationships, all is well in my world. Nothing is worth feeling derailed for. Derailment is like an energy thief, stealing the precious energy we can ill afford to lose. If something doesn't feel good, it usually isn't. How often do we ignore what doesn't feel right and push through? How often do we knock on a door that isn't opening, overriding warning signs, such as a nickel inside or a knowing that something feels off, that we've been here before and that our current situation won't end well, yet we continue to push. The book is just full, full of all of, all of that. So it's like every word will, will hit home. Right. I want to talk about your process you know, the process of writing and, and what you said earlier about you're speaking to somebody and suddenly they say something and you get inspired and you're like, that's it, that's the book, you know. Um, why do you follow through? Why are you so sure that that's what it is? Oh, um, I'm so sure. It's just a knowing and it's almost like, It's getting the ego out of the way and knowing that a gift is coming through me. And so therefore, I don't want to say it's my responsibility or duty, but it's maybe it's me that's being like the midwife. So I'm delivering that so that others can, can enjoy that. And maybe I think for me, I've been through as many of us have, but I don't want to undermine what I've gone through. I've been through a lot of hardship in my life. And I think if I can save some people from going through what I've gone through, mm -hmm. then then, then it, nothing gives me greater, greater joy. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I think we need to get to the, to the, to the joy. You know, I used to be positive, but I had this melancholic feeling 
un, un, sort of under undermining who I was. But as I wrote this book, and now since I don't have that at all, mm. and it's like, wow, that's that's such a shift. The essence of who we are permeates everything, and so it's like, how am I showing up today? You know, when you get together with a friend or a colleague, what story am I going to tell? Am I telling a certain story because I want that person to validate me? Am I telling a story because I want that person to make me right and the other person in the situation wrong? Mm. And so, what, 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 what good is that? What good is that doing? You know, so it's yeah. I think this these the series is so empowering because it stops all of that it makes you self accountable self responsible but also it has that element of your finding your joy and so you show up very very differently and it's definitely not as a victim mm. the the phrase that kind of brought me up when you were speaking before as well so we can touch on that was the what you said about and un, this underlying melancholy I can recognize that because I I know that I lived with an underlying melancholy for many years and even though um and it's it's not there now I there's I, I there are many things that I can say that shifted it um, many of the things that shifted it was that we're talking about, you know, creating a distance between the elements of people pleasing. Like if I think about when did that really go? When did that really go? And when did I not have to kind of wake up with a sense of like something, you know, there's this kind of like sense of like dread or some sense of like something's coming, something needs to be done. Something's not right. Um, and that I know that came for me when I made had to make hard boundaries and hard waking up to the fact that I'd spent so much time, even though I'd kind of gone on my way and tried to make so much of my life and do certain things, there was still an element of trying to please people who could never be pleased. You know, this, you know, you're like banging on banging on the wall of um like me like me look I've done this look I've done that and then never being the response that you want never being the um, celebration and the the acknowledgement of what you have done and how far you have recreated yourself and what you've come out of and and all of that and because I I was doing that for so long you know come back and go look look what I did you know this is a big thing in the world and there are and also and and also not hearing the amount of praise that I was getting from the people that were getting benefit from what I was doing so it wasn't like I was just kind of sitting in a bubble and not doing not getting any feedback any positive feedback I was getting oodles of positive <laughs> feedback from what I was doing people like Re this is amazing this is really oh, like you know you've really helped me in this way all of the things that you want to hear but yet it was never but it was never possible for me to fully absorb that until you know there came in a, a, a time where I was like oh this is why because there's still part of me that is not fully seeing what everyone else is seeing even though I'm being that because I'm still trying to please people who just don't have it in them to or want to, you know, because maybe they think, you know, my pride will kind of overcome or everything. But who knows? I'll never know. And there was also a time when I had to let go of wanting to know, you know, like <laughs> there needs to be no more explanation as to why they can never see me. I just need to accept that they can't. And then what am I going to do about that? Because I, do I not want to fully experience all the work and all the effort and all the things I have achieved and all um, the, 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 the way that I'm walking towards the vision and the purpose that I have for my life? But there was still this kind of underlying melancholy until I, I made that shift of like, I'm going to have to just be what I know myself to be without that. And now there are just moments when I catch myself of like, oh my God, this is peace. 
random moments you know nothing has to happen other than just a, a regular day and a moment of tuning in where there's there's suddenly more space because I'm not kind of hitting this point of like that was there that had been there for so long that I didn't even realize it would it was a continuous um hampering of my own expansion if you want and then once once I'm like pushed that away and of course there was a period of of mourning intense mourning of have I done the right thing what will people think and you know still that judgment but then when I made that severing and really went hang on a minute I've why do I keep banging myself against this wall and just going away from it and then allowing that solitude to dissolve away any remnants and then find the space in that solitude that then just got filled with like oh okay we can do other things now you know um so that's you know I wanted to reflect back on how that really just brought up something for me and knowing what that feels like of that constant sadness that just kind of sits there right in the bottom in the corner you know almost unacknowledged Exactly. And sometimes it doesn't just sit, it actually, as I say, it permeates everything and we don't really realize mm -hmm. it. Because now it sounds like what you've got and what I have is a sense of lightness and a sense of peace. Of course, we don't always have that 24 hours a day. But mm -hmm. I say in every day, there are moments of joy and peace to be found, especially if you're looking for them and moments of wonder. Mm -hmm. So it's what we choose to focus on. And again, it comes back to self-worth. So if we have people that are negating us, then it's like, you know, you can love them for who they are, but you can, but that, that doesn't need to chip away at, at my soul. It's, you know, because, you know, as you say, you know why you're here. And, and it's not that those people don't love you. It's probably that they don't love themselves. That they can't express that love and whether they think you know you get as you say that, that it's pride or I think it's more that a lot of people when they knock us is because they don't feel good enough about themselves and they're not doing the things that they really want to do themselves they've, they've let go a lot of, of a lot of dreams but as I say we can doesn't have to be big dreams we can just dream of peace we can dream mm. of, of as i say of just finding some wonder each day and, and laughter and playfulness because we can get so serious and i think the more that we are light then yeah it just overcomes it overcomes so much mm -hmm. tell me about some of your inspirations and things that fuel your creativity and kind of keep you wanting to make and do more well, but all creative beings. So I think because I'm so tapped into it, so I've always got several projects on the go. And I think it's to uplift. <laughs> it's to uplift one another. Of course, I started writing my children's books because I there's so much abuse with children. There's so much bullying. But it's, it's really rife in the country where I am. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to put messages down that, you know, children could feel could feel lovable but with my children's books those messages carry out for adults and so it doesn't matter whether it's my adult series or my children's books they will still hit home for an adult and I just for me it's just really important because I didn't feel lovable for so long and so I I want people to know that they are lovable and yeah just to tune into the to, to their heart and to know that they're but they're beautiful no matter what. So I mm. think that stems from not feeling loved, not being told we were loved when we were growing up, that I just want that that to change. You know, one of my children's books, it's called I Am, what is it? I Am Me, Unique and Free, and there's a beautiful picture of a flower, and it says something like, in what ways are you beautiful? So not are you beautiful, but in what ways are you beautiful? And so it's like, Oh, okay. And so it's like, so just imagine children or teachers or parents having to think, how am I beautiful? And it's like, what a different way of, of, of questioning. And I think that's just what I want to bring to the world. I say I'm the self-love expert. And so for me to just, if I can just facilitate people just to know that they're lovable because of who they are, not because of what they do, mm -hmm. then job done. Mm -hmm. 
and I saw as well you when I was getting your information um that you had a windfall during the lockdown how did that come about oh that was interesting uh yes I did that was three years ago I um I'd entered a competition and um I'd forgotten about it and then two days into one of our lockdowns I get this phone call from Cadbury's and she said she was the marketing manager and she said you've won our competition and I was thinking that must be um, a box of chocolates or a basket of chocolates and she said no you've won our major competition and it was ten thousand dollars so oh, <laughs> I remember crying at the time and then it was like Woof, woo. Uh, it was just yeah it was just like thank you universe because, you know, our lockdowns were so brutal that we were encouraged not to talk to our neighbours. I wasn't allowed to do my massage work. And so I didn't have the income coming through. So it was wonderful. And so then I sort of commissioned editors for my books and, and some some artists. And so it really got me back into books again. It had been, there'd been at least a 10-year gap because I didn't feel like I had the money to put into books because it costs quite a bit to um, pay for illustrators for children's books. So um, it was just a boon because that was my absolute passion. I mean, I've still got about 20 manuscripts sitting in my computer. So it's <laughs> like, um, but just slowly, slowly, I turn up, like that movie, um, is it? field you build the field and and you know build it and then you it will were, come Is that yeah it? yeah that's how I live my life and mm. it's amazing what turns up mm. you know for, for this stepping into love book series the illustrator that did the I am me unique and free I sent her the manuscript and she loved it so much that she said um, even though she'd illustrate the children's book she said I want to gift you the illustration for the series and that's that's what she's. Um, that's what she's done. Wow. I'm working on an, another book at the moment, and somebody randomly said they weren't trained um, classically with art, so they wanted to do illustrate a children's book. And so I put my hand up. So one of my other books, it's just such a, another beautiful story, and um, that's being illustrated for me. So it's sort of like we're collaborating, helping helping one another. So it's 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 amazing. You know, I think my story is showing people that no matter your financial situation, that you can still bring things to fruition. Mm. You know, and I'm I'm building, of course, like at the moment, so things, you know, finances, the world has just been in chaos and my business has been extremely affected the past few years. So I'm just, you know, just building and um yeah, it's like not letting external factors or fear get in the way of what I want to create. And then suddenly it's like it's all just coming together. There's more books, more podcast interviews, and it's like, ah, oh, I'm in a very different space now, which is great. Mm. Mm. That's great. And what, you know, talking about the lockdown and that period of time, what shift, how did it shift your perspective on the world how did it change you what well, was interesting you know family part of our family was was fractured um i guess for me because i did have that ten thousand dollars as my son said we're going to have the best lockdown mum. <laughs> so <laughs> it, was, it was like i am so looked after it was like i am the universe thank you thank you so much i mean who lands ten thousand dollars from that phone call right. the money was in my account less than two hours later it was like wow that's incredible you know it was just so it was just showed me that i could stick to my convictions and my choices and if I didn't have work, I didn't have work, but I had that money that was going to keep a, ro a roof over mine and my son's head, and then I could still throw myself into my dream mm. of writing and publishing more books, which I which I did. So the lockdowns for me were, it was like, it just took, because I used to be a caregiver as well, so it took all my everyday work that sort of just disappeared. And so I had this time to immerse myself in my writing. So it's just like, how amazing is that? 
Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's just finding out because it's shifted so much for so many people. You know, just the mm-hmm. perspective of humanity and who they are and how they were showing up, and um, and it's just now interesting to see how that's going to play out in the future in terms of the the changes that it's given people changes about how they work changes about who who is directing their life you know and like how much autonomy they do have or they believe that they have or where they kind of acquiesce that and just kind of sit there and wait for you know the next crumb and the next idea of where to go um and I you know it's really pulling on or or creating a a groundswell of people who really want to make change, really want to create a different world. And I think where we're at right now with everything just coming to this crescendo is the crescendo probably that we need in order to get to the point where we're just, maybe even we have to be disgusted, horrified, but or appalled by where it's got to actually stand up and go, no, no more we're here for different things than this. What What are your thoughts? So these are the things that I think about. And also I'm thinking about for has everybody processed the trauma of that situation, whether it was, a, a you know, whether it was more joyous or whether it was really difficult, it's things change. And when your entire external reality changes, it really can, you know, mess with your head when you're trying to figure out what's happening where is everyone why can I not communicate with people the way that I could do six months ago before all of this happened where do where do where did people go people went into very different and very peculiar spaces and some have not necessarily kind of come back out of it to even just have a conversation of what happened you know just just to resolve it from everyone's point of view and go what was your experience of it not saying that anything is right because I think that everyone's experience that they had was their experience so we can't invalidate people's experience based on what they chose to take on board and then act on um but it's just now what are we making of that what what does it change for you or if it changed anything for you? I know it changed your work because you had that gift. Yeah, it it did. But then we went into another lockdown and then went on for months. So that money sort of disappeared. So then it was, a, you know, a huge stress. And still to this day, my massage business is not as busy as it was pre-COVID. So it's 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 been interesting. I try not to think about it at all because... As you say, we each had a different experience and I think it's for us to breathe through that to sit comfortably for where we're at again when we self self love, self worth. It's not about worrying what other people are, are thinking. If if we are in integrity with our soul's choice, then it's it's owning our decisions and it's also not, you know, placing our views on on other people and so again that's what I said it's sort of like at the beginning of each year and I said the beginning of last year as well it's like focus on what you want to bring and your gifts to the world because it's just noise and what we focus on we, we, is it, we're affirming it and we're bringing it in like law of attraction we're bringing it into reality so I'm focusing on my work because I know that that can impact more people to a de- greater degree and so the other stuff it's like no it's it's, it's, it's isn't there a saying um be in the world be off the world but not in it or be in the world, be but, in not the world of it. but not of it yeah yeah and that's that's how I like to to to, to be because otherwise as I say that that's not my I'm certain people have certain roles and for me, it's to stay calm, it's to offer healing where I can, whether it's through words, whether it's through massage, whether it's through podcasts, and it's, that's 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 where, where I'm at. You know, the world will always go through different cycles and things, but it's, um, if we can come back to ourselves and our, 
you know, a, from a heart, an act from a heart centered place, then that's how we change the world. We don't change it by fighting. We don't change it by coercing somebody. I'm not, I know you're not saying this to believe a certain way or to not believe a certain way. It, it's, you know, it's, it, that's just division. Mm. And so it's like, where's the commonality? And that's, we've all got a heart. We can all, you know, um, express from our souls and, and go higher. And then the world changes. How it changes, you know, again, that's not really up to me. As long as I'm doing what brings me joy and what I feel is the work that I need to be doing, then that's my business. Can you let everybody know how to get your book and, and any other things that you might have coming up in the near future? Yeah, for, sh- yeah, for sure. So my website is truepotential.co.nz mm-hmm. and on all of my books are also on Amazon. Sometimes that's easier for people to um, to find my books there. And I think, what's my author name? So it's Angela M. Smith. And then I think it's forward slash True Potential. That's my Amazon name. But I can I can give you the links. What have I got coming up? I've got um, the Thankfulness Journal is coming out October, November. So that's part of the Stepping Into Love series. And another children's book um, is coming out. And it's a beautiful story between a um, bear and a rabbit and a unicorn. And it's a conversation about what makes them feel good and for looking for the wonderful in life. And that's 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 about it for now. <laughs> that's plenty. That's beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing your story and your your life with me on this episode, Angela. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, for sharing your work with me and thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode and you feel you know somebody who could benefit from the wisdom of my guest, please share that episode. And also, if you enjoy her conversations, please leave a review. You can find out more about me on my website. It's carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. Find me on LinkedIn and Facebook under Carol May Wittick and Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K on Instagram. Until the next episode, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.